row, row, row your boat gently down. No, aggressively down the stream. If you are PJ Fleck in Minnesota and you're facing the rambling wreck of Georgia Tech and you have just wrecked Paul Johnson's finale with the Yellow Jackets. 34 to 10 at the Quick Lane Bowl. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, breaking down the Gophers' win to finish their 2018 season at 7 and 6. This is basically what we forecasted earlier today and yesterday in breaking down the Quick Lane Bowl is that Minnesota is a different defense under defensive line coach Joe Rossi compared to what the output was in the first nine games under Rob Smith, their former D.C., giving up 46 points per game and over 500 yards per game on defense. And then Minnesota in the final three games of the regular season defensively in facing three of the tougher opponents on the schedule. Purdue, a prolific offense, Northwestern, a good offense, and Wisconsin with possibly the best running back in the nation, Jonathan Taylor. Minnesota improved from 46 points per game given up to 13 per game, 500 plus yards given up to 305 yards given up per game, and they carried that effort, that intensity, that scheme into the bowl game against Georgia Tech despite having to face this odd triple option attack. All right. Paul Johnson's final game, and he finishes with his 60th loss at Georgia Tech against 82 victories, and possibly the last game we will see of the triple option offense in major college football in the Power Five. All right, of course, the Academy still choose to run it. Uh, The Minnesota quarterback situation has been between two very inexperienced players the entire year, Tanner Morgan and... uh, Uh, Of course, uh, Zach Anikstead, who was given the job out of camp, earned the job out of camp as a true freshman, the first Power 5 player as a true freshman to earn it in walk-on status since Baker Mayfield. But Tanner Morgan proved to be the better quarterback and started the final seven games of the season and uh, took on this winning streak. Uh, Seth Green out of the Wildcat uh, has been effective with eight rushing touchdowns. He carried it five times for 31 yards and proved to be a changeup in short yardage, and that was key for the Gophers in this one. But it was Muhammad Ibrahim. I'm going to get that name correct because every time I look at it and every time I've seen Minnesota play a number of times this year and seen him play because he came into the game with almost 1,000 yards rushing, I want to say Ibrahim. I want to give it that little dialect, but it's not there. It's Ibrahim. He exploded in this game, and right out of the gate, about the third or fourth carry of the game, he ran it 19 yards down to the Georgia Tech 17-yard line and ran right over the cornerback, number 36, for Georgia Tech, who is a senior from Jacksonville, and took him right out of the game. He did that a couple times. Minnesota was the much more physical team. If you looked at the one-on-one matchups, whether it was a Minnesota defensive back or linebacker against a Georgia Tech running back or quarterback carrying the ball or vice versa, uh, certainly with Ibrahim carrying the football, Minnesota was just a stronger man-on-man in the open space, uh, driving back the would-be tacklers or the tacklers for Georgia Tech Each and every time, Minnesota was physical in this game. They came into the game with a roster composed of 52% of freshmen. That was the highest total and is the highest total of any team in FBS play. And Minnesota uh, used all that experience throughout the season. They say that uh, you no longer have a freshman once you get to postseason play. He's no longer a freshman. He's basically a sophomore at that point. And Minnesota proved that the experience advantage that Georgia Tech had was no advantage in this game. Emmett Carpenter finished off the first drive that Ibrahim uh, started with a field goal to make it three to nothing. And Carpenter moved into second place on the all time points list for Minnesota football players and the Minnesota football tradition. If you don't know much about it, pre 1960, it was one of the best in the nation. So to be second all-time in Minnesota scoring history is something. Tyler Johnson, we talked about this. If the Minnesota quarterbacks could get the football, and it was Tanner Morgan, of course, finishing 7 of 13 passing, so they only threw it a rare amount of times because Ibrahim was so 
uh, explosive and so dominant in the run game in the Minnesota offensive line as well that they didn't have to throw it much, but they threw it effectively and they threw it downfield. And early in the game, the fade route to Tyler Johnson, who was a mismatch, he's going to be in the NFL, touchdown there 10 to nothing. On defense, Julian Huff had to take over for the NFL draft, preparing Blake Cashman at linebacker, Minnesota's top uh, defensive player in terms of total tackles, missing in action in this game. So Minnesota was missing its left tackle and its leading tackler on defense, Blake Cashman. I talked about that in my preview, and that was the one aspect of this matchup that made it difficult for me to pull the trigger for Minnesota missing two of its best players, and also that the quarterbacks would not be able to take advantage of the Georgia Tech secondary downfield, possibly. But they did, and I picked Minnesota to win this game, despite those concerns. So Johnson gets the touchdown on the fade. It was a beautifully thrown ball from Morgan. 10 to nothing, Minnesota. Julian Huff replacing Cashman had nine tackles to lead the Golden Gophers. And, oh, by the way, his brother... Jacob Huff was the second leading tackler for Minnesota with eight total tackles. Georgia Tech had all sorts of trouble punting the football on this day. Their punter, Presley Harvin, punted four times. He had an 18-yard punt. He had a 12-yard punt. Both of those set up Minnesota in prime field position. And so I looked this kid up thinking, okay, he's a disaster or he's the second Uh, punter on the depth chart. No, he averaged 44 yards per punt this season, 44.3. But on this day, he averaged 18.8 yards on four punts. And that proved costly for Georgia Tech. Ibrahim was just mowing guys down, just the physical runner in the open space. As I mentioned, he was key in another field goal drive, 13 to nothing. Ibrahim ran 31 times for 224 yards Ibrahim outgained the number one rushing offense in college football, Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech came into this game averaging 300 and I believe 45 yards per game rushing, number one in the country. Minnesota held them to 206, and most of that was pretty ineffective. Georgia Tech only had three yards rushing in the first quarter when Minnesota took a 13 to nothing lead. Uh, Taquan Marshall finally ripped off a 15-yard run at down 13 to nothing. That set up a field goal that made it a 13 to three. Wesley Wells from 44 yards right at the gun of the first half to make it 13 to three, and uh, that was after Taquan Marshall ripped off a 19-yard run, had two completions down to the Minnesota 27-yard line that were crucial. So I thought this was key. The announcers thought that Georgia Tech was going to throw a Hail Mary with five seconds left in the first half, but they still had time. They threw the out. They got it closer, set up Wells from 44 yards, and Georgia Tech had some life at halftime, 13-3. to Second half, more from Ibrahim, and again, just bowling guys over. Blown coverage by Georgia Tech, a key play in the third quarter where Chris... Otman Bell, a prized freshman for Minnesota who caught 28 passes this year. His only catch on the day, though, from 41 yards out, broke Georgia Tech's back, made it a 20-3 game at that point. Ibrahim became the first Minnesota back since David Cobb in 2014 to rush for over 200 yards in a game. Tyler Johnson again on the go route to the corner. And... uh, This ball wasn't thrown as well as the first one from Tanner Morgan, but uh, Johnson adjusted to the football, beat the defensive back, came back for the ball, caught it, went into the end zone, and made it a 27-10 game. It was later 34-10, and Minnesota would not let up on defense. Tobias Oliver, who shared quarterbacking duties with uh, Taquan Marshall this season, got into the game. He made some plays happen. He ran earlier this season for 215 yards on 40 carries against Virginia Tech. And he, despite the change in offense, and we'll talk about that in just a second, um, new head coach Jeff Collins has said that Tobias Oliver will be in play for the quarterback position in 2019. I find that kind of hard to believe based on his skill set. 
Uh, Boye Mafe, a redshirt freshman up front from Minnesota, was very impressive in this game. A number of freshmen and underclassmen. We mentioned the most in FBS. This spells a bright outlook for Minnesota in 2019 as the Gophers win this one again, 34 to 10 over Georgia Tech, holding Tech to 206 yards rushing and just 283 yards total offense and only 14 first downs. So Paul Johnson rides off into the sunset for Georgia Tech as they conclude their season at 7-6. and six. Jeff Collins moves into the head coaching position from Temple, where he coached for two seasons, including guiding the Owls to an 8-4 and four campaign this year. He spoke about the transition in offense on the sideline during the game. Of course, he downplayed it, said that they would review what they have and uh, that they had already signed two tight ends. Uh, during the early signing period and that he would be uh, equipped to run his style of offense in 2019. For the Yellow Jackets in 2019, they are the headliner along with Clemson on August 29th to kick off the ACC Network. Uh, It is Georgia Tech at Clemson on August 29th, week one, the first game for the ACC Network. The other game for Georgia Tech outside the division in 2019 is against North Carolina State. So they've got a tough draw in taking on Clemson, who they always face as their cross-division rival, and then also against North Carolina State. The out-of-conference schedule for Georgia Tech is sneaky tough. They take on South Florida, who lost its last six games under Charlie Strong this season to finish at seven and six, they've got the Citadel, which of course ask Alabama how tough the Citadel is at Temple. So Jeff Collins has to face his former team on the road in Philadelphia. And then of course the annual rivalry game, clean old fashioned hate against Georgia, the final weekend of the season for Minnesota. You would think that Tanner Morgan, despite an open quarterback competition would have a huge advantage in this one following the way he provided leadership and uh, decision-making at the quarterback position. He's also a better and more mobile runner than Zach Anikstead. So Tanner Morgan with a clear advantage for 2019 at uh, the quarterback position for Minnesota. The Golden Gophers will face out-of-conference South Dakota State at Fresno State, a team that mount, won the Mountain West Conference and then Minnesota defeated at home this year, 21-14, to 14, but the Golden Gophers have to travel to the West Coast to take on Fresno State. And they also have a game against Georgia Southern. So no Power 5 games out of conference for Minnesota, I believe, for the last time in 2019. Of course, they take on the Big Ten Western Division, but out of conference or out of division, Minnesota's got a pretty light touch at Rutgers, Maryland and Penn State at home. So no Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State. They do have to face Penn State in Minneapolis. And then again, they've got Maryland and Rutgers on the road. Minnesota with the youngest team in FBS finishes with a bowl victory and seven and six record, something that a few of us could have forecasted just a month ago facing the likes of Purdue and Northwestern, the division champion, and Wisconsin, possibly the best roster in the division. Minnesota wins two of those three, wins the bowl game to finish at 7-6, and six, and P.J. Flex, second season in Minneapolis. Paul Johnson concludes at 82-60 and 60 at Georgia Tech. Your thoughts on Georgia Tech and Minnesota football as we look back at the Quick Lane Bowl and look ahead to 2019 right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football.